everyone! Cassius here, welcoming you back to the Shakespeare Minute. Today, we go beyond the barb to discuss Jean Racine's play, Phaedra. Phaedra by Jean Racine is a French play from the 1670s that covers the Greek myth of Phaedra, Theseus, and Hippolytus. Essentially what happens is this, for your little plot synopsis, Theseus is away from home, and his son, Hippolytus, is trying to figure out where he is, what he should do, how he can become a hero in his own right, because dad was such a great hero, all that nice prince stuff that you do. Phaedra, however, Theseus' wife, has fallen in love with Hippolytus. This is her stepson, not her son, so it's marginally less bad than that, but still pretty freaking bad. News comes to Trozen, where it takes place at the court of Trozen, and everyone thinks he's dead. Theseus, dead. That's the news. So Phaedra realizes, well, now she can admit her love for Hippolytus. However, Hippolytus has fallen in love with someone else, Aresia, the woman from a family who's been overthrown by Theseus, so she was politically dangerous before, but now you've got Phaedra trying to seduce him on the other hand, so that makes it even worse. Well, of course, there'd be no shoe to drop if Theseus were actually dead. It turns out he's alive, and what unfolds is, of course, the tragedy, which I will leave the rest of the plot to you to read. So what's up with this play? The first thing you might notice about this play is that the title character and central figure is a woman, which in Shakespeare's tragedies you never, ever get. However, Jean Racine, particularly, uh, was able to use women because there were female actresses to play them. So he wrote female characters who could take center stage much more than Shakespeare could because of the traditions of the later decades that he was writing in. However, lest you think that everything is awesome modernity here in these classical French plays, there are a few ancient throwbacks. The court dramas of France, that is, the plays that were written for Louis XIV's court, were very, very proper, and they used a lot of ancient Greek traditions in their plays, which is to say you're not going to see any sort of Hamlet or Titus violence on stage. They thought that was absolutely barbaric. So Shakespeare existed at this point, and the French people who saw that thought it was just horrifying. Now, the people writing popular drama in France, that's another matter for another day, but the court dramas were very refined. It was very much out of the mold of ancient Greece where, you know, a messenger would come in and say, oh my god, you'd never believe what happened off stage, and give like a three-page speech of really awesome action that you wish you could have seen. Uh, admittedly, Racine and many of these other playwrights do like to take the opportunity to have huge flights of fancy and talk about stuff that you couldn't really stage, especially not back then. Like, oh my god, and then like the skies opened up and the earth cracked open and, you know, god knows what. But the fact is that it is in these big speeches that a lot of the big climactic action happens, not in the staged action per se. Whether it's big skies and earth opening sorts of things, or very simple, very understated action, that stuff tends to happen off stage. Now the different playwrights pushed the envelope on this to different degrees. Racine was very restrained, very classical in terms of how he did things, so when he pushes the envelope he does it in ways that still make everything very coherent and very uh, relaxed in the rules, even as he's trying to sort of work around them. He doesn't really seem to be victim to too much tension. He doesn't feel like he's struggling against the bounds as much as some of the other playwrights of the time. Uh, he does write entirely in rhymed alexandrins. Uh, unlike iambic pentameter, it's iambic hexameter. You got two more syllables there. And of course, since it's 12, you've got lots of different ways that the line can break up there, because you can do, you know, six and six and all that, and there's a very sing-song style to it, especially because it's all rhyming couplets. So if you were to read this in the original French, which I do recommend if you can, you'll see that it's much more structured than Shakespeare. It makes Shakespeare you know, look like E.E. E. Cummings. It's so refined and regulated. Now this does put off a lot of people, and I think that's very fair. However, it's 
really fun to read a little bit of Racine because he actually gets to use female characters and he's really good at it. Uh, his female characters are absolutely fantastic and they're crazy and awesome. Even his lame love interest female characters tend to be really fun and interesting because they tend to be from political dynasties and have this huge sort of tradition on their shoulders that they have to be dealing with. So I like that a lot. I did minor in classical French drama, so I've got a bit of an axe to grind with that. But Phaedra, I'm telling you, if you, there's any play that you're going to start with in terms of the French drama, this is where to begin. Phaedra is a wonderful play with lots of really heart-wrenching passages that I definitely recommend if you are looking to go beyond the bard. Till next time, I'm Cassius. Think of the world.